Okay, you ready? Good morning, everybody. Good morning. How are you? Happy Tuesday. Good morning, Maddie. Happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. Tune in Tuesdays. And Maddie and I, I want to welcome everybody here today. And um, as soon as we get going here, I'll let actually Maddie cover off some of our housekeeping items for this morning. Yeah, so feel free to turn on your cameras if you would like. We'd love to see your smiling faces. And just so everybody has an idea, can somebody type in the chat? Type so you guys know where it chat. is. If you have any questions, say hello in the chat. If you have any questions to where that is, you should be able to just hit the chat button at the bottom of your screen. Oh, hello, Donna's got it. Or the thumbs up button, yeah. something to you can figure it Good out now. Good morning, Donna from Nova Time. We are happy to have you. We're happy to have all of you here today. As we talk about 2021 and what that means for your organization and your business going forward. So I'm going to get started here again. Please jump in at any time with the chat and uh, turn your cameras on and the thumbs up. Love that, Judy. Thank you so, so much. Okay, we're going to begin. So a little bit about us for those of you that are joining us for the first time. We make a difference in people's lives. We live it, we breathe it. We want to continue to make a difference in our community. Uh, thank you to those who nominated Uyghurs for the uh, community award with Sabex. It was yeah, really exciting, exciting for us to, to uh, be able to put that whole concept into motion. Yeah, it's wonderful. We have a commitment to the Children's Hospital Foundation. You can see over you know, a decade of commitment and over a million dollars raised, which has been wonderful. It's so, I mean, we've had that impact even our own office and our own office staff time and time again. So we're very glad we finally were able to, you know, help out, make a difference in for that. Absolutely. And there's our team. So just because we are down here talking to you this morning, we got people up there doing their thing. And I want to do a notable mention this morning because seriously if you left it to me and matt to run these shows uh it would be nothing short of what maddie <laughs> chaos chaos so danielle who works very very closely danielle she's going to oh stand here so she is a very key player <laughs> on group retirement as well as the group benefits area she is the mastermind she puts all this stuff into a usable a and presentable, usable format. presentable format. So thank you. She is absolutely vital to our team. So we're going to start off with a poll. Hopefully it should work. The question is, have you started goal planning and setting targets for your organization? We're into Q4, well into Q4. We have two months left in 2020. Isn't that absolutely mind-blowing? It can't end soon enough. <laughs> That's exactly it. We're, we're getting the sense that, okay, there is this, this uh, race for the finish, and uh, we've got this year just careening. It just seems yeah. to be really, really moving forward. So, it's so important to start your planning early, communicate with your team early, make sure everyone is on the same page. We found, you know, and, and we'll get into this a bit more later, but corporate communication can be a huge boon in, in making your employees be engaged and actively working day to day. Um, for your organization. Absolutely. Everybody wants to kick in their their ideas and their input. So, wow, we've got about a 70% majority here. It's good. For goal planning for the remainder of 2020. That is excellent news. We'll talk a little bit about that and why you should be goal planning for 2021. Uh, so when we think about... 2020 and what what a what a year i mean what a year from companies that ceased the recruiting process there was layoffs we had a a new uh, leaner landscape yeah. right it, when we think about uh the employment sector yeah and it's in, it's not going anywhere unfortunately um, COVID is not going to be continuing for at least the next year i would think at minimum um so i mean what did we learn from this what are our 
one of our owners, Cliff, always says is what am I right, what am I wrong, what would you do different? So that's a good way to like look at the year in general. What did we do well? Did we pivot? Did we, you know, did we do, you know, if we could go back and, and do it again, would we do something differently? Yeah. What would we do differently? What what areas he hasn't texted me back yet. Well, we have a Sorry, was there a question? Regarding your coffee here. <laughs> and I'll take those because I'm gonna clean those right away. Yeah. Let's Donna, see. we can hear you. <laughs> Donna. There you go. We muted you. <laughs> Feel free to unmute yourself if you do have a, a question though. Awesome. So technology became the focus and whether or not we wanted to embrace the theme of technology, it no longer became a situation of, okay, just we'll see what happens. We'll see how the year rolls out. So we'll talk a little bit about digital marketing. It's here to stay. It's, what are you finding, Matt? What are you finding in the group benefit space for this? It, it's been it's been a learning curve, but even insurance carriers are having to kind of learn as they go because they've never experienced anything like this either. So beyond just these digital marketing offerings you can see on the screen, in regards to benefits, people had to okay go paperless. They had to close their office down. They had to set up their call centers from home, and it's and we still need to call them constantly to get information and then their clients and their book of business call them. So beyond what we've had to do with, you know, Zoom and Teams and LinkedIn is a big one, especially. And the one we predominantly use is Workplace. And it's been it's been great for, for us to be able to keep in contact with our team, keep a you know a face to the <laughs> to a the relevance. Name. It's true. Yeah. It's true. You know, digital marketing, like it or not, is here to stay. And I think that you know, we're going to have a question regarding this later, but for your organization, for your business, what are you finding? Are there themes in your organization and business that are no longer relevant? Is there outdated material? Is there a, um, a sense that there's something that doesn't serve what you do or represent you in the best light that you should have moving into 2021? Yeah, there's a lot of things I know in the last months we've looked at everything we do and it's like well why do we do it this way why do we do all this paper why do we do this since we don't have to everyone's trying to run a little bit leaner so taking an introspective look at your day-to-day -day, i mean we have routine meetings with this in the benefits team i'm sure you guys do in grs as well of how can we be more efficient with our team's time how can we get more from less which is what we talked about last last more webinar absolutely but. you know when we see how company and organization budgets have been really slashed there isn't the money out there for typically what you would see for a multiple rehiring or i'm going to hire specifically for this rule and we're finding that companies especially moving into 2021 are going to be very aware of what the budgeting concerns are for staffing and, and even things as simple as LinkedIn, for example. So a couple, about a month ago, we went through a big LinkedIn thing with our organization, yes. make sure everybody has it, you know, you're comfortable with using it, all that kind of stuff. And just seeing, like for a free tool, seeing the engagement, like yes. just for speaking for myself, I went from, you know, it sends you an email, you showed up in one search this week, to now I'm getting over a hundred, just from making oh. a few profile changes, that kind of stuff. So it, it's a very easy way to get your, your name out there and you can you know i mean we'll be sharing this on linkedin after so Absolutely. It, it's a it's a great great tool it that is. we found that you know if we can reach 100 people by spending half an hour a day on linkedin versus 100 people cold calling or 100 people mailing a letter or door to door like it's a whole trying to pivot and re and reimagine how we see our clients and find new ones exactly you reimagine finding where those areas or pockets of our wonderful province of Saskatchewan, where those people are here locally as well as not locally. And I think about, okay, people at home, Maddie, okay? Kitchen table marketing, okay? So the kitchen table marketing uh, replaced shoe leather marketing. We're so used to, we were very used to our roles. And I use that very loosely defined because I think our roles are always changing, Matt. Mm -hmm. but that shoe leather marketing where you would go out and you introduce yourselves and you think of nothing of it on site to just go and say, hey, listen, this is what I do. Uh, this is what our organization is all about. And, and that, now you, you walk in the door, it's like, say, hey. if they let you in the door, yes. which is, which makes sense. So then we have to, okay, we can't keep doing this. How is another way we can reach out to 
I mean, even, even good clients, a lot of them don't really want strangers dropping in to say hi, even if you are bringing treats or something like that. Yeah, that was a hard thing for me to adjust to, believe yeah. me. So we're going to go on to a couple <laughs> other areas here. But building momentum into 2021. So we're going to talk a little bit about what we've done here, what you may want to look at doing with your team. They are so valuable to all your success for your organization. Yeah, so with kind of a, a general hiring freeze almost in, in a lot of sectors, uh, you need to get more out of what you have, right? Retention, all that kind of stuff, but staff retention. Um, a couple of things that, that we did, um, one, one right off the hop initially was what we called our ideas challenge. The ideas challenge. Yeah, so what ownership did is said, hey, well, you know, everyone's at home, so we'll buy you a skip the dishes lunch, submit an idea, and if we use it, it's great. And honestly, we have caught so many new things from that. It's crazy. So at the cost to ownership of a dozen lunches, which is nothing, we have revamped tons of our processes and procedures, all, all sorts of stuff. So that was a wonderful one. And it feels, you know, as an employee, you submit an idea and it's used and embraced by the whole organization. You feel, oh, they're actually listening to me. They care about, like, it's, it's a really good feeling from an employee side. And from an employer side, you can you know, get so much out of it. The best ideas come from your team. And I think about, you know, when we think about culture and that corporate communication and how you can tie in all the areas of your organization, <laughs> there are some of you that have absolutely huge organizations where you've got employees at different um, skill set levels and different levels of contribution. <laughs> But different you locations. do at different locations and you want to bridge all that into how you're going to innovate for 2021. And uh, I would invite you to look at doing that survey, do some type of um, engagement with your with your team, because the ideas are unbelievable that are out there. We, we were shocked to, to yeah. you know, you think, you know, your colleagues you think, you know, your colleagues. Well, and we found this another cliffism, but if you don't ASK, you don't GET. If you don't ASK, you don't GET. So, and that comes, we found even with talking to our own team, apparently if we had never asked if, what do you guys think? Can we run things differently? Exactly. It, it worked. The other big thing we did is corporate communication. So mm -hmm. every Tuesday and every Friday, uh, ownership and management, and now some of us that have been getting us to do it, um, we do a corporate address. So it's a video on that workplace platform that we talked about and we get announcements, we get notifications, yeah. we talk about social committee stuff and it's, and it's a mandatory thing. So Tuesday morning and Friday to wrap up the week, uh, we get not announcements from, from ownership, like the one this morning talking about Christmas and Halloween. And so it's a really yeah. good way to stay connected. And honestly, I found, again, speaking as an employee, the communication of hearing what ownership is thinking, yeah. then passing it down to us every week and not, you know, only in a meeting or, or that kind of thing. It's, it's become, great. exactly, it's become part of our process procedure. And I think when you can take an ideas driven concept in your organization and business, and hey, it sounds really good, but if it stops there and it doesn't go past the table, right? It doesn't go past that initial conversation yeah. and it doesn't get inked and made into your process procedure. That's, that's where it, it's going to fall off. So we're going to go into our next yeah. concept about how to build on that. Well, and one, one other last sort of thing that, that we did, and I guess I'll skip through to the next one here yeah. while we're talking about. So because everybody is selling from Absolutely. reception when you walk in to your administrative team, everything like that. So one thing we did is for years and years, we've had a weekly sales meeting. First thing in the morning on Mondays. And it yeah, now it's Tuesday afternoons, <laughs> love that. So it's the whole sales team would get together. So yep. we were on the same page. We could share, you know, wins, losses, how would you have done the differently, all that kind of stuff. And I, was, I think this actually came from one of our ideas challenge, but yep. now our, our support staff, our administrative staff is included regularly in these meetings. And they've had, we've had nothing but great feedback for them to be, oh, okay, these are things I can do to help yeah. make the organization successful. How can I contribute as an administrator, someone who's behind the scenes, putting the documents together, not necessarily face-to-face -face like this. How can we help the overall goal? We call it the big W, the big win. The How big can everyone win. contribute to it? Absolutely. And even if you're in an area that isn't specifically thought of as sales, Sales is like, it's a bad word. Oh, it's a four-letter word, you know, a five-letter word. In this case, it's sales. 
I'm telling you, you know, right? And it shouldn't be. We're all selling because you're selling to keep your client base, your suppliers. You're selling to keep everybody uh, knowing that you're the only choice, right? How do you differentiate yourself in the work? Because everybody is selling and everybody is the face of your organization. So if you think that somebody behind the scenes is not that face of your company. Think again, because they actually are. Yeah, and we've, we've, huge way. we've recently hired a new reception and that is a very involved process here yeah. uh, because they are the first face most people talk to and the first face everybody sees. Everyone can be an ambassador for your company. So remember that, yeah. awesome. We'll go on right into our next concept here. A little bit okay. on your end, Maddie. Yeah. So, so one thing we found with everybody staying at home, and this is a way to, you know, help with that employee engagement, corporate culture, all that kind of stuff, is a wellness spending account. So I know I've talked about health spending accounts before. Uh, these are taxable to the employee, but th this is a way you can you can sort of pivot, do things differently, and give your employees that little bit something extra while keeping your costs down. So one, the first right, you could you could dedicate one to home office supplies. I mean, a lot of people, I mean, we're only about 60% capacity here yeah. and that's probably not going to change for the foreseeable future. I think so. so, I mean, just from taking our example from the very first week, we all shared pictures of our office space working from home and there's people in the kitchen table, the hunched kitchen over on a table counter marketing, right? or on a couch or something. So people have, you know, throughout this process had to kit out their home office a little bit. Yeah. So this is one way you can you know, contribute to your employees and specify it and it, you know just for home office so you know your your staff are spending it on that the other one education invest in your staff courses they're they're everywhere now you can if you wanted to you could spend every hour of the day on a zoom meeting i i think at this point or a webinar exactly and if you're taking your existing employee base and we know that your best strength is within your organization. And if those employees do need to upgrade their skill set, because that is what has happened. It's no longer fitting people into a role anymore. That's almost gone away by the way. So, well, it's not my job. Matt, it's not my job. That's not good enough anymore. And it has now moved to what is your skill set? And what can you do to bridge that skill set into other areas? We have a great question here from Mike yeah. Cars at Blue Cross. $300 wellness spending account for all of employees, utilization over 90%, highly valued. Yeah, I agree. We, we have one as well, and I maxed mine out this year. I know, I know most of us, most of us do. It's, I mean, for me, I used mine on, on fitness, so on golf. So essentially we yeah, used you your golf for a once a year, days. once a week golf thing, which, so I got a ton of value out of that. Absolutely. So it's like, oh, this is wonderful. It's a great you know, retention tool for that alone. Yeah. Um, and, you know, fitness, I know some of the gyms are open, but for how long? I mean, we see every week or every day on those COVID updates from the government that it was, you know, motion fitness here or this gym here, there's yeah. one. So it's great that they're open for now, but, but home fitness, home gyms. Yeah. I know so many people who have started investing in, you know, dumbbell sets or a bench or something like that. So you can contribute, continue your sort of you know, routine a, a, yeah. a little bit more. Outside of the workplace. So when we think about wellness spending, wellness accounts versus the health spending accounts. What's the key differentiator then, Matt, between those two? Key, key difference really is health spending accounts are regulated by CRA. Okay. So they're the things that your employee benefits plan, you say you get 80% reimbursement on drugs, you can put the 20% over to a health spending account. Wellness okay. can be pretty much anything. Um, we have one client who set it up for driver training. That's true. Because they have a, a large immigrant workforce, so they can specialize specifically to that. I have another one who wants to set it up just for yoga doesn't believe in chiro physio massage all that kind of stuff but wants his employees to do yoga so that is what he can set it up for okay. so you can pretty much customize it however you want beautiful awesome the other um area that before we get into our last poll for our segment here is um just looking at when you think about your website revamp and i just i keep seeing the branding changes Mm -hmm. We're seeing it from a supplier side, but we're seeing it in all areas, whether you know you are in the healthcare, whether you are in an industrial and commercial space, utilities or wherever, we're seeing that constant desire to remain relevant. So I'm going to get you to introduce our last poll. It's a really involved one, but I think we're going to see a little bit of engagement from this one here. Yeah. So 
Okay, I watch it. So this, what are you going to do in 2021? What are you going to do about it? It's all great ideas, but what are you going to do about it? Feel free to pick as many as you'd like. Um, it's the time, COVID, we found the time for projects. You have extra Project time. Project planning. You want to keep your employees engaged. I mean, looking at your website, looking at your digital marketing, your yeah. logos, yeah. Uh, making sure you revamp your communication, cultures, things like that that yeah. we've talked about. Those are just some ideas that you guys can take away. I'm so curious this. to see if because of budget constraints with hiring or are you going to revise your job descriptions within your organization? So are you going to take existing um, work, see, you know, your existing workforce and are you going to make them embrace other areas of your organization or are you going to hire outright so i'm really curious to see who's hiring who's downsizing or you'll say i'm doing nothing <laughs> right do nothing status quo you know i'll just stand in line do you want to stand in line probably not i hate standing in line <laughs> got some great uh feedback here. Well, this it's is interesting good. no downsizing. Wow. yeah but an even split, a third between employee education doesn't surprise me at all. Corporate communication culture, again, look what it did. I know I see it with many of our groups that we work with us. Do you, what happens when ownership truly becomes a connected leader and brings in their workforce in a meaningful way? That's absolutely key. And again, a website revamp. So website revamp, use local, right? Yep. We, we talk about local all the time, local with a national reach. It's really, really important. Uh, reach out to us, reach out to, to people you're linked in with to see who's doing great work locally. That's awesome. Uh, getting into some final thoughts for today's segment 2021. Matt, what could we tell our incredible group here who has joined us? If you take nothing else away, I would highly recommend the corporate communication just to make sure it's hard to hire employees right now. <laughs> you put out an, an opening, you'll get hundreds because everyone is so desperate. So you don't wanna have all the costs for training and retraining and retraining and retraining. I mean, to give you an idea on corporate culture, we just had an employee come back last week who was gone for seven years. And seven this years. was the first place she wanted to come back yeah. when she was finished raising her kids. So yeah, that, that was a wonderful kind of, you know, we're doing something right. Yeah, after I know. That long, right? Want to come we can't back, be so. that hard to get along with. And I would say, even since then, we've improved. We're improving constantly with communication. That that is probably the number one thing that we have pivoted and did really, yeah. really well internally, at least for yeah. our own staff. And, and in both ways, and not to be afraid of what those dangers are. Okay, dangers, yeah. opportunities, strengths. I know. Cliff talks about this all the time. And what are those dangers or opportunities? How can they be harnessed into strengths? Because they always can in some way. And again, you're not going to want to stand in line. You're going to want to get ahead of it going into 2021. Yeah. So does anybody have any questions? Feel free to un audience. unmute yourself if you'd like or type it in the chat, whatever you, whatever you think is easier. For those of you who have left us a Google review and do follow us on LinkedIn, we love it. Thank you for that. We are going to be posting this after the webcast and stay tuned because we have some plans for 2021. We will be reaching out to you and to much of our wonderful um, contacts and clients because we want to hear what you're doing in your organization and we want you to come and talk to us and tell others who are watching what you are doing really really well because chances are if you're thinking it so was somebody else and they might not be you know outright asking the question but we can all give each other great feedback and help each other grow we need to be there for each other in saskatchewan and um, especially now going into 2021. Right. Awesome. all right so it doesn't look like there's any questions so at that, we always try to keep these under half an hour or Absolutely. close to as possible. So we will wrap it up here. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining us. Have a fantastic rest of your October. Stay tuned for our next webinar and stay well. Take care. Bye for now.